So we're going to jump over to back to Amazon and we're going to click on CloudFront. We're going to create a distribution. Get started. Our origin name is going to be um, the load balancer. And you could pretty much leave everything exactly how it is. A lot of this stuff um, you're probably not going to want to change. Um, this forward query strings, you'll have to make sure within WordPress that uh, you don't allow query strings and that you um, have custom URLs, which most WordPress sites do, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, and then everything else should, should be fine. So this should all be good as a good default here. So we'll go ahead and create the distribution. So this is going to take a little while to create. But what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to take this domain name. We're going to jump over to stage. We're going to copy our domain name in and we're going to click save. And now the only thing we need to do is we need to wait for this to complete. And actually while this is still working, inside stage we can now edit our WP config. And we can change the URL. So the URL doesn't have to be the load balancer anymore. The URL is going to be the CDN. So the CDN is going to be what's going to cache all of our content. And we could also create another distribution for our S3 bucket as well. But for this test, we're just going to set it up for um, just our domain. So in order for us to sync this, we're going to need to uncomment these lines. So let's just sync this out real quick. And let's bring stage back in. Okay. And we'll wait for this to complete. Okay, so you can see that the status is now deployed. Um, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the domain name URL paste it in here, go ahead and click enter, and boom, we got our page. Um, so the CDN, uh, the CloudFront distribution, is talking to the load balancer, which is then round robining across two application servers. And those servers are both back-ended by an RDS MySQL uh, server, and they're sharing cache with a Redis layer, as well as storing their images and all the library information into S3. So, a couple things I want to show you before we conclude this. Uh, I want to make a post. So I'm going to say new post. New post. And I want you to notice something here. And this is something that in your production environment you'll have to fine tune. Um, so you can see here it says recent post, new post. But then when we go to the CloudFront distribution, it is not there. And that's because that this is being cached um, by CloudFront. Um, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set low TTLs on your headers. Um, so when you send your headers up through your load balancer, you're going to need uh, your CDN, your CloudFront distribution, to respect those headers. So right now there's a max age of zero. All these things are getting cached uh, permanently. But you'll notice if I want to, I can select new post, paste it here, and boom, I've got the post. So the post is there. It's just not active on specific pages. So now if we created another new post, so let's say we create a new testing post. We do that and we go to view post. So now we're gonna see the recent three here. If we refresh this, we're not gonna see it there, but if we go to the home page, we're only gonna see one. <laughs> but now if we highlight testing post, we should see, oh, it looks like we only see just the two there. So uh, there's a little bit of caching going on there, but I'll leave that up to you to, uh, to figure out. I think that concludes the rest of this tutorial. I guess um, the only other suggestions I would say would be um, however you decide you want to do your deployments that make it really easy. Um, the way we were doing them here in this tutorial wasn't the best, but it got the job done. Um, so that concludes it. If you have any 
questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, and thank you for watching.